Hello everyone. My name is Samantha and I am the Huga Stitcher and welcome to my very first floss tube. <laughs> I'm so excited you guys. This is amazing. I have this whole table set up with all of my cross stitch goodies and I can't wait to share with you my story a little bit um, so that you can get to know me and yeah let's get started can you feel all the ball of nerves that i've got going on all the jitters ah okay anyways i'm the huga stitcher i picked this title because huga is something that i just learned about huga is a lifestyle um it's a danish way of living i got this beautiful little book it's called the little book of huga the danish way to live well so I recommend, look at this cover. Doesn't it kind of remind you of cross stitch a little bit? <laughs> Huga is basically to me, what it means to me is you ever come home from work and put on your comfiest pair of pants and get in your comfy spot, have your hot cup of tea, um, hot coffee beside you, a warm blanket, Maybe you light a candle, light your fireplace. I have a fireplace, but it is like, you know, you just turn it on, click, <laughs> heat blows through it, it's fake, but it's setting the mood of comfort and being safe and happy. Um, you maybe you might wanna have like a little chocolate or some home baked chocolate chip cookies. I don't know, that is Huga. Huga is a, like a feeling when you come home in comfort and this is a perfect time to bring out your stitching, your knitting, your crafting, whatever it is that you love to do. For me, it's cross stitch. Um, that is my happy place. So I wanted to share that with you a little bit about that. I wanna read actually the very first introduction to this book because it really hit home for me. It says, Huga, Huga, Hugo, well, I don't know. It's not important how you choose to pronounce it or even spell Huga. To paraphrase one of the greatest philosophers of our time, Winnie the Pooh, when asked how to spell a certain emotion, you don't spell it, you feel it. How cool is that? Huga. <laughs> Anyways, so that's a little bit about me, um, the Huga Stitcher. So I wanted to start off with telling you a little bit of story of how I got started. Um, I got introduced to cross stitch when I was 16 years old and um, how it happened was my, I went to go visit my sister. She's um, eight years older than me and I was 16 and I went to visit her over the summer and she had a roommate and her roommate had a chair with a lamp right by the window with a stand and her cross stitch and her threads and needle and everything. And I asked my sister, like, what is that? <laughs> what is going on over here? And she's like, oh, that's my roommate. She, she cross stitches. And actually she made me one cross stitch and it's on the wall over here. And she showed it to me and it was a teddy bear uh, cross stitch. So this is from 1992, you guys. This is an old, old pattern. Um, yeah, and I saw it on the wall and I was like, wow, that's really cool. I wonder, you know, I asked her later on if I, she could show me how to do it and how she stitches. And she showed me and I asked my sister, like, this is so cool, I, I wanna try this. And she's like, let's go to Walmart <laughs> and get the pattern for you and the fabric and you can start stitching here and take it home with you and it'll be a little project that you can learn how to do. I was so excited. So this is the pattern. It is called the Teddy Bears Picnic. And as you can tell, it is all ripped up and <laughs> well loved because it's very, very old. Um, but yeah, the teddy bears picnic, I worked on this. It took me, guys, 10 years to complete. <laughs> 10. I started it when I was 16 and I finished it when I was 26. So without further ado, I'd like to show it to you. This is framed from Michael's. Uh, yeah, let's hopefully this shows up nice for you guys. <laughs> this is my teddy bear picnic. It is stitched on Ada. When, and it had French knots in it, a couple of French knots in the butterflies, and that basket took me forever. So um, as I was stitching this pattern, um, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, 19, in my head I thought to myself, one day, um, I think I might put, if I ever have a child or a baby, I think I might put it in uh, the baby's room. And I did do that when I was 27. I had uh, my first child and um, this was framed. I had to have it framed and put right above the crib and it was there for, for many years. 
um, yeah, I'm really proud of that piece. I, that was my very, very first finish. So I had to show that in my very first floss tube. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go on to finishes. I actually have a finish. Um, the reason why I've chosen now to start my floss tube is because I thought I had enough things. Like I've got some, uh, some stories to tell and some starts and I have some haul and I have some finishes. So this was just like the perfect time to introduce myself um, to all of you. So I have a finish. In July, I was working on uh, Christmas projects. Um, I have the Nora Corbett uh, reindeer. I have the whole collection of, of these. And every year, uh, usually around Christmas, I start one. And it's been taking me forever to get through them all. But this is Donner. And here is the finish. This is stitched on a 28 count. Twilight Blue Linen by Witch Elves. Can you see that? So what you'll notice about uh, myself is that I do a lot of Mirabilia's and Nora Corbett's um, because I was a stitcher who just only stitched one designer for very, for many, many years. I have so many things to show you over our time um, here on FlossTube. Um, but I'd like to tell you that I am, because of FlossTube, I have started to venture out and find new designers and start new projects, which is really exciting to me. But look at this, you guys. I love doing beading. Um, this one has a ton of sparkly jewels in there. How fun is that? So there's my finish, not fully finished, but a finish. And I thought while we're talking about a reindeer, I, I brought out all my reindeers because I wanted to show them all to you because I have multiple collections um, to show you, but not today. We're gonna do reindeers today. So I forget the name of this one, but here's another reindeer that I've done. I can't remember when I did this, maybe last Christmas. I thought I would just show them all to you. Each reindeer has like the exact same flosses. Um, in each pattern, it uses like a whisper on the tail, which is kind of fuzzy. And, um, but the beads are different in each one. And I've also done the reindeer, uh, the Santa sled. This one was done on 32 count, but same color. I have two of them that are done on 32 count. This one here, as well as this one. I don't remember the names. <laughs> I was really bad when I, uh, before I learned about floss tube, I actually like, after I was done with my patterns, I would just either give them to a friend or donate them to Value Village. <laughs> and now I'm really regretting that. I wish I had saved them all so I could show them in my videos. But this one's beautiful, don't you agree? Look at the sparkles in that. Ah, so those two, I actually plan to, this one I plan to frame, and this one I plan to frame. I want to keep these two on the wall at Christmas time. The others I plan to, I will insert a picture. I had um, a fellow stitcher that I know who has stitched these and finished them in a beautiful way. She put them in a block with a bow on top. And my plan is to double side it. One reindeer on one side, one reindeer on the other side of the block. So I'll insert a picture here now for you guys to kind of see what I mean. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with the other ones. I think it would be really cool to have those um, two framed, the, the sled uh, framed on the wall and then have some blocks that may be on this mantle at Christmas. So there's that one. I have plans to do the others. This one is Comet. This one is Cupid. I have the fabric and all the beads and everything ready to go. Dancer. I just plan to pop to bring these out whenever I feel like it. And I'm saving the best one for last. Rudolph. <laughs> cool. So that's that. I had to show you all my reindeers. <clears throat> I have one more to show you. Um, it's not a fully finished reindeer, but it is what I have been working on for July. I finished one and then I st started another one, but I'll show that to you in a little bit. Okay. So that's that. So those are my finishes. Whips. Okay. I have a whip here. This is the oldest whip I have. It is a Mermaid of Pearls by Mirabilia. This pattern came out in 
1997. To me, this is a classic. You can never, like, when you look at this, it doesn't scream 1997, I don't think. So that's that. Um, I started April 2020. I started this one. I hope you can see it. Can you see it okay? I'm halfway done. I feel like I'm halfway done. So when I do my patterns, I usually like, as you're opening up the pattern, I like to do the first half. Um, and then I do, all, I complete it. I do all the beading and everything. And then I flip the pattern over and over and do the second half. I'm a hand, in hand stitcher, everyone. I'm learning how to use, I have purchased um, two Q-snaps that I plan to use with some of my new projects that are coming. Um, just to kind of, because I love the way that the stitching looks when you use a Q-snap. Um, but I, I'm a stitch and hand stitcher. That's my oldest whip. I'm putting this one away. I thought I would, I started, I worked on it this summer a little bit and I'm putting it away because I have some really exciting new starts <laughs> that I'm excited to do. So that's that. And then the next whip I have, I started January 2021. This is a new designer to me. Map of Hawk Run Hollow, um, Carriage House Sampling. I think I saw this many times on Instagram and was just so drawn in by this hawk. How cool is it? And um, this pattern had so many new things for me. Um, I purchased it and when I looked at the um, the flosses it called for NPI which is a silk I had never used I've only ever used DMC a few silks in Mirabilia um, but I ordered all of the NPI silks this was a special project for me so this was a bit of an investment but it was a first time for me using that which was really exciting and the fabric um, called for 40 count which I've never used before. Lakeside Linens, never used before. And this is Autumn Gold. Wait till you see how much I've done. Look at that. I had to do the hawk first. That was the first thing I did. <laughs> um, so I went all the way down. This is page one up here. And this was a bit of an, um, a different page, page four or something like that. And then I worked my way across. I did page two, which was right in the middle. And then this side was page three, which I have completely finished. I stitched this in hand as well. But it was the first time using silks. First time using one strand over two strands of linen. I did it. When I first started, <laughs> I had, to, I like put in a few stitches, you know, like, uh, maybe one strand worth and I, I had to ask my stitching friends. I took a picture and I said to them like, you guys, is this right? Like, am I doing this right? It's so small. <laughs> They're like zoomed in on their phones and like, yep, yeah, it's right. That you're doing it right, Samantha. Um, so I kept going and I absolutely love it. I love being able to use one strand of floss. But it's like you just, you're not wasting any time. You just grab a floss and go. Um, I love using the silk. It, it stitches so nice. It's very smooth when you stitch. I absolutely love that. Um, and this fabric is gorgeous too. It feels so nice in your hands. I absolutely love it. So needless to say, I'm a little bit addicted to this um, carriage house sapling. I bought more patterns because I want to stitch more things. That one's that one. That's so I started that January um, 2021, and I'm gonna put it away for a little while and start some new things. And then my newest whip, which I was telling you, I in July I was doing Christmas. So this one is Dasher, and I started it like a week and a half ago. I'm almost done, but I'm gonna put it away. Um, last night I did some beading. So I did the beading around the border and I started the beading down at the bottom. Whenever I do beading, I always like to do the most painful beading first. <laughs> and to me, this was painful. It's all like one over here, one over there, some over there. And I really want to get into here. So there's all the gems, right? All the easy, like there's perfect little spaces. Like, oh, I can definitely tell there's a bead that goes there and there and there and there. Um, yeah, I always save the best for last <laughs> or else I'll never get through it. 
Who can relate? Anyone? <laughs> um, when I bead, I use um, an invisible floss. I use what's called Wonder Invisible Thread. And I bought this at, um, at a quilting shop. So it, it's invisible, you can see it there, but it makes your beading look so amazing. Some people use the same thread of the color of fabric, totally fine. But I personally, I just love being able to, it's a pain to use, but once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh, it just looks so good. Like you can put on a clear bead and you don't see anything, just, just the bead, it's like magic. This is what I use to, um, to bead. So I have this cute little handy dandy. It's supposed to go on your armchair, but I always have it beside me. Um, I put the scissors in there, um, your pins, and then your beads sit on top. You can dump the beads out and, and bead. I love this thing. I love this little caddy. I wish I could tell you uh, where I got it and maybe I could figure it out. Um, it was a local, um, there used to be a LNS store that I used to shop at all the time. Um, but they're closed, but the owner, she's still around. She is actually a part of our Winnipeg Embroidery Guild, which I'm a part of. And um, when I see her, I might ask her if she has any more of these to to sell, because I think people would, would love them. Anywho, NPI Silks, loved working on that. This one, putting it away because something very exciting came in the mail. So I'm just gonna go to stash I'm gonna go stash. I got this pattern Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Oh, let's turn it this way so you can see it a bit better. I'm sure this is very familiar to many of you. I have been seeing it all over Instagram for the last couple of years and just knew once I got my, you know, once I tried the map, I was like, there's more patterns out there that I have to try. And this was my next purchase. So I've had this for a little while but I did order the fabric that's supposed to go along with it, which is 40 count Legacy, picture this plus, Newcastle, 36 by 27. This is a huge piece of fabric. I got this from Traditional Stitches. So I'm from Canada. I should have said that. <laughs> I'm from Canada. And my local store, I don't, I, there is one here in uh, where I live in Winnipeg and um, a lovely lady named Barb owns the store and I love shopping there. But whenever I make an online purchase, I go to Traditional Stitches. They have um, excellent patterns and fabric um, and they're from Calgary and they're, they're just absolutely lovely. I, I just couldn't talk more about them, more good stuff about them. Check them out, check out the website. Uh, traditionalstitches.com. When I wake up in the morning and I have a cup of coffee, I am on Traditional Stitches website. I'm looking because they always have like, here's what's coming new. Any new releases, they, they put them up there. So uh, every day I, I check it. Um, so go check out their website. It's, it's awesome. So this is the fabric legacy. Picture this plus. I've never stitched on picture this plus before, but it's beautiful. I love it. I also ordered some DMC flosses. This one calls for a lot of floss, so I'm not doing MPIs on this one. <laughs> so I got some DMCs. The colors look amazing on it. I have it all kitted up. This is my birthday start. My birthday is next week, and on my birthday, I am starting this pattern. Halloween. I feel like it's a perfect time to start stitching Halloween. What do you think? Are you guys starting to stitch Halloween, autumn? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be um, something new I'm starting pretty soon. And the next one I will be starting is Owl Forced Embroidery. They have a stitch along called um, Alice in Wonderland. So I have downloaded the pattern. It's a free pattern. So go to um, Owl Forest Embroidery and you can download this pattern. It just stitched along. I think it's like halfway done now. Like I've seen some pictures on Instagram, people have gotten down to here. They've stitched the middle. <laughs> this picture's all blurred, but I, I can tell what it is because I've seen the pictures. Um, but um, the middle is done and, well not done, not the very middle, but this green part is done, the leaves, and then down to about here. So when my fabric and threads arrive, um, I am going to start this and I'm going to start wherever they are in the stitch along. I'll do the middle so I kind of know where I am 
and then I will um, stitch wherever they are and get caught up. Oh, me and my best friend are doing this pattern together. We've never done Owl Forest embroidery. It's from Russia, I think. Um, my girlfriend placed the order. She got us fabric, um, all the called for threads. Um, so I'm excited to use those. Um, so that's what's coming up next. Probably by my next floss tube, um, maybe I'll have this and that'll be a part of my haul. Maybe even a new start. I don't know. <laughs> So that's that. I am going so quickly. It's been 20 minutes and I thought I had enough here for an hour, but I guess I got the jitters. I'm just talking really fast. I'm really excited. Um, plans. I've already shared with you the plans. I have one more thing I wanted to show you because over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go to the cabin with my family and I'm going to plan into doing um, my new start for my birthday and stitch, stitch, stitch the whole time we're there. And I also have this um, diamond embroidery painting project that I want to finish. I started it last year. Some of you are into diamond painting and I thought I would share this with you because I, I think it's unique compared to some of the other ones I've seen. So this one's called Collection de Art. And what I thought was interesting about this kit was that um, when, I, when I started using, like it came in these little bags with a number on them. This one's 936. Um, this one's 3011. If you look at the colors, 732. I was like, wait a minute. These actually match DMC floss. Every single color in here matches a DMC actual color of floss. 3354. How cool is that? I thought that was interesting. So. I want to show you what I've done so far. It is a lotus flower. It's called Magic Lotus. I'm almost finished. Oh, sorry guys. I have maybe like 10% left to go. What's kind of cool about this diamond painting too is that it's like, instead of them being little round gems, they're square. So they fill up the whole space. You see that? What do you think of this? Isn't it pretty? I have another one um, that is like hot chocolate and marshmallows and oh, <laughs> I'd like to start that sometime this year. But while I'm at the cabin, I'm going to finish this up. Cool, hey? Do I sound Canadian? Do I have an accent? No, that's crazy. I don't have an accent. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you and guys enjoyed my very first floss tube. 23 minutes. <laughs> what was I thinking? I thought it would take an hour, but it did, really didn't. Um, this is my first floss tube and I plan to make more. I want to come back every couple of weeks and show you my progress um, and some of the projects. And what I'm really hoping for is to just be a part of the community. I have been watching floss tube for four years. I have my favorite floss tubers and I usually comment uh, in their comment section, things like, hey, hello from Canada, uh, from Winnipeg, the home of Winnie the Pooh, if you didn't know. Um, that's usually what I say to people or, and I usually, you know, leave comments about their stitching and, and things like that. I, I stitch and I watch floss tube. That's what I do in my spare time. I just enjoy, like, I love the long videos. I love some people who have like an hour long because I can just get comfy, press play and stitch away and look over, oh, I wanna see what that one looks like. Okay, and then just listen to what's going on. I love it. I love floss tube. So I'm just excited to um, introduce myself to all of you and to start this journey so crazy i feel kind of silly but um i'm just really excited so i'm gonna get this uploaded and i will see you in a couple of weeks take care everyone Bye bye